excited to be a part of, got it? <laughs> uh, no, that's okay. A part of the Northampton Chamber um, and be an investor. So uh, I feel extremely supported by the Northampton Chamber. My dad owned our company originally, and it was always just part of our brand's um, core values, really, to support the community. And what's so great about the Northampton Chamber is that there's such a um, mix of types of members, right? Whether you're a solopreneur or an uh medium-sized business or a large business, or you're an artist, or you're in the nonprofit world, or you're a fitness instructor, whatever it is, um, I just find that it's this great meeting of all the minds in the community. Um, and as a younger woman who is learning how to manage a company, there's such, and, and learning how to manage a new family, <laughs> there's um, such a great support, both personal and business as well. Um, so those are some of my reasons for being here and helping with the connect campaign because I love to spread the good work that the chamber's doing. And I think I'm passing it off to Amanda now, if that's correct. Yes. Hi, I'm Amanda from Copycat. We've been part of the chamber for about five years and it's been a great experience to get to know people in the community. Um, I was working up in Greenfield previously and uh, moving down to Northampton, I didn't know really that many people, but now I go to um, the events and I can't even say hi to all the people I know, it feels like. Um, so it's just a great way to connect. Uh, it's, uh, it's generated business for me without even trying. And I've also, um, you know, networked with people that I've gone to for their services, which has been really great. So the chamber has been a great experience for me and really, really valuable, um, especially in the last few years with all the support and resources provided through the pandemic. Um, yeah, so then I'm going to kick it off to Elena. Hey. Uh, so I'm Elena Sharnoff and I run B Strategic Communications and it's a, a website and messaging company. And um, I think one of the things that <clears throat> has struck me from the very beginning, I've been a chamber member for about two and a half years or three years, something like that. But like from the very first moment I stepped foot in the door, I was welcomed by an ambassador and I'm an ambassador now. And I think that um, I try to go to every networking event that the chamber has. I've also gone to their Lincoln Learns. I've tried some of their uh, volunteer op um, options through network. And I think that what I'm always struck by is as many people as I see in the room who I know, I always meet new people. And um, I always meet new people and many of them become people I refer my clients to or people who might even come to me for business or people who become my colleagues or my, you know, part of my um, support network. And I always feel like I go to an event and I meet interesting people doing interesting things. I feel really connected to my community of greater Northampton. And I always feel like there's, there are more people to meet, you know, and more businesses to be excited about and to support. So that's a, a wonderful thing. And I don't know who I'm sharing. This Chris. With. Chris. Chris. Chris Good morning, everyone. Um, that was very well put, Elena. Um, I'm Christopher Galvin. I work for Complete Peril Solutions out of Springfield, Massachusetts, but I am uh, I cover this area. I consider myself part of the Northampton business community as that I am also a member of the board of directors for the Northampton Chamber. Uh, that started uh, last year in January. It's been an amazing experience for the last year. And, you know, I just want to thank all of you for coming today, both uh, many of the investors on this call and hopefully some potential investors uh, to learn more about the chamber. For me, I'm going to focus a little bit on the larger businesses. So, you know, when I first joined, there was a question of what would it bring to a company of 200 plus employees, right? It was different for me because I worked in that area. But the large based businesses can really collaborate with other businesses in the area and focus on key initiatives. And the chamber helps drive that. As an example, we ran a variety of different lunch and learns and link and learns during the pandemic through Zoom. 
And what it taught us was, was that we had a variety from our one solopreneurs all the way up to our Fortune 1000 companies looking for guidance and support from their local business community. And for me personally, the connection has led to sales. It has led to opportunities for me to volunteer within the community, feel more connected. But more importantly, it's offered an education into the needs of other businesses, which makes me better at what I do. And I feel lets me be more equipped to better support the local community in my role as a board member or in any aspect that I do when supporting clients. So enough from me for now. And uh, we'll go to Jess and or Vince next, right? So obviously we all know them. They are, they are the lifeblood. Jess <laughs> makes all of this happen. And well, Vince creates the budget that allows for all of this great stuff to happen. So I'm going to throw it over to them. They have a presentation and then we're going to come back for a discussion uh, a little later in the session. Vince, is it okay with you if I just leap right into the presentation or do you do you have some sage words to, to, before we get started with that? No, I, after Chris, I want you to leap right in. <laughs> okay, well, here we are. What to expect when you're investing. Um, I would like you all to remind me um, that I need to talk quickly um, because I want to get to the conversation part. So if I... Uh, are dragging on, um, you know, give me the, the old signal here. Uh, oh, let me change the page. So the mission of the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce is to be a catalyst, catalyst for collaboration and innovation to foster a thriving economy and community invigorated for diversity, equity, invigorated by diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I promise I will not read every single slide to you, but I do think that though that concept and that idea is really important for people to hear as well as see because it guides every decision that we make and how we prioritize our work. Um, we are a, a diverse community. Um, in terms of size of business and industry. Um, however, um, it is quite amazing that the vast majority of our businesses are small with 49% being under five employees. Um, so the greater Northampton community doesn't have a huge corporate base. And um, in fact, many of our largest corporations or employers are actually in the not-for-profit sector. Um, so I, that also very much informs the way that we work and how we prioritize our programs and our activities. Um, we think about the work of the chamber really uh, based on three Cs, connection, collaboration, and community. For many people, when they think about a Chamber of Commerce, I think the idea of connection is probably one of the first things that comes to mind. Um, and certainly people are very familiar with our events like our Arrive at Fives. Many of you were there last night. If not, all of you may have been there except for maybe Amy um, last night. Um, but there are lots of different ways to connect through the Chamber. Um, many people think about the connections in terms of like a sales relationship, like I'm going to meet somebody who's going to buy something from me, or I'm going to meet a potential vendor who I will buy something from. But there are lots of different kinds of connections that happen. Um, we'll get into Lindsay's story about um, her relationship with Jen Neary, who also sits on our board and is the owner of Clinic Alternative Medicines. And for those of you who were there last night, you heard a bit about the connection between Northampton Living and Mana Community Kitchen, but I'm gonna synopsize it um, just in case you were networking while we were doing that piece of the program. Um, we started a new program this year. It's called Network, lowercase n-e-t, uppercase w-o-r-k, where we connect with our not-for-profit community, bring in volunteers from the Northampton community, from the chamber community, and do a project for them. 
Um, the idea behind that is supporting our not-for-profits, giving them a spotlight to tell the community about their mission and their work, and creating an opportunity for networking for our for-profit business and other not-for-profit businesses. Because for some folks walking into an Arrive at Five where there's 100 people, that's not their favorite kind of networking. Um, but we are also able to highlight the work of our volunteers, acknowledging their impact on community and by the businesses that sent them, allocating time and resources towards making an impact on community. Uh, so Manic Community Kitchen was our first network event. We made about 150 meals. Um, we served them to members of the community and uh, the publisher of Northampton Living is Daniel Ryder. Daniel was so blown away by their program that he chose to feature them on the front cover, Mana Community Kitchen, on the front cover of their November issue. So if you live in Northampton, you may have seen this come to your mailbox yesterday. But there's that's not a you know a direct um, sale relationship kind of. Uh, connection. It's a different kind, but equally as meaningful to our community. This is a lot to read. I promise I'll send you this deck so you can see. <laughs> Elena's dying. She didn't know that this picture was going to be there. But these are um, some testimonials from folks who are here today um, that talk about ways that they have utilized the chamber and the connections and the community that it offers. Um, the, the ways, the opportunities for connection are diverse. Um, network, as we've talked about, Arrive at Five, uh, that many of you experienced last night or have come to previous Arrive at Fives. We offer Link and Learns, which are also educational opportunities um, because we serve an entrepreneurial community. Many people come to their work with a passion for the thing that they do, but may not have you know, an MBA where they have studied finance and studied uh, business law or um, even social media or marketing. They know the thing that they know and they have to learn the other things that you need to make a successful business. Um, so we harness the expertise and the resources of our community to share information, expertise, knowledge, and the basis for a successful business with our community. Um, one of the things that many of our members value in their relationship with the chamber is our ability to offer more marketing and visibility than they may be able to do on their own. Um, that comes through our Community Connector newsletter. Um, when, before COVID, when, um, uh, I would have very happily told you that we had 1,500 subscribers. I would have been quite proud of that. But during the period of COVID, it has expanded to 5,400 subscribers and it's growing and growing and growing. And members of the chamber, members of our community have the opportunity to share news in our community connector for free. Um, it's not free advertising per se, it's not a display ad, but it's a, a news blurb. Um, and we see that people are engaging with our community connector. Um, our open rate is uh, significantly higher than industry average. And we know that people are engaging with it. And we hear all the time that people look forward to receiving it. Um, it's also a great source of information, grants, programs that you might take advantage of. Um, so if you haven't signed up for the Community Connector, go right to our website, northamptonchamber.com and, and put in your email because you, you'll, you'll want to get that. Um, you can see that northamptonchamber.com is also a vehicle for visibility, as is our social media. Um, so we're often sharing, uh, using our social media to help expand the reach of our members, letting people know about initiatives and 
good news and events uh, to help a greater, to help our members expand their reach to our reach. Um, we have a monthly tourism newsletter as we are also the seat of the Hampshire County Regional Tourism Council. Vince is also the exec executive director for the Hampshire Regional Tourism Council and Jack is their marketing manager as well as the Chambers marketing manager. Um, and we'll get into more of that in another slide. We do a lot to support our local economy from raising money to give out grants during the height of COVID to offering uh, free COVID tests. Do you need free COVID tests for your business? Swing by the chamber's office, we can give them to you. We have them to share. Um, we offer link and learns. We do programs like 413 Dine Out Takeout because the restaurant industry is so impactful. It has such a ripple effect for other businesses and other industries in our community. We did a lot to support them um, during the troubling times that we've just, knock on wood, made our way through. Um, we are the home of the Greater Northampton gift card. Um, the thing that I would like to highlight, there's a lot of really impressive statistics. The way that the Northampton gift card is designed is that we know every dollar that is spent on Northampton gift cards is invested in local small business. And we see somewhere around upwards of $300,000 each year in gift cards purchased in our region. And we know through that program, we're supporting our small local businesses, restaurants, um, any member of the chamber can participate in the gift card program, but we see adoption uh, a lot through uh, like home services, uh, spas, beauty and healthcare, retail and restaurant. Um, but Every member of the chamber is, uh, it's, it's a resource that's available to all. Destination marketing. Vince, can I kick this one to you because you're the expert on such things? Well, sure, thank you so much, Jess. We are the home for the Hampshire County Regional Tourism Council where we support 20 communities in Hampshire County, including Northampton. And we're just trying to attract visitors to the area and uh, celebrate the things and, and the reasons that people come here. They come here for our outdoor recreation. They come for our amazing, iconic museums. Uh, they come for our five colleges. They come for arts, culture, and entertainment. So we are the machine behind the marketing and promotions that, to get them here. We've got a website called uh, visithampshirecounty.com. And um, we couple that with our own chamber website, northamptonchamber.com. You can see how impressive the traffic is on, the, on those uh, two sites. And we also have uh, uh, frequent engagement and announcements and communications through our social media channels. Uh, we've got uh, an Instagram account and Facebook account uh, very impressive. And we have a partnership with Franklin County, again, to really celebrate our, our shared um, outdoor attractions and the things that really get people to the area. Because once those enthusiasts get to Hampshire County or Franklin County, they will cross visit uh, with each other. So we have a partnership called WMassOutdoors.com is a website, and we're building that audience and uh, in just the last uh, six months, it has grown phenomenally since we relaunched that website. We produce a visitor guide every year, 30,000 print copies, an online copy that's distributed throughout Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York City Grand Central Station. Uh, just a fun fact is that uh, our, our top two markets where people come from are Boston and New York City. So we invest heavily in marketing to attract visitors from those areas. Um, and these examples of art um, 
ads on the on the right hand side are just uh, you know recent examples of uh, placements that we've had in the Republican as part of their dream destinations, the scenic side of Massachusetts, which really is the branding for Hampshire County. It's the other side of Massachusetts. Uh, so we play a lot on that. It's the artsy side, it's the foodie side, it's the jazzy side. So it has lots of legs and we invite people to find their side on our, the other side of Massachusetts. And we're constantly getting grants and, and finding ways to attract visitors to the area. That's it. Thanks, Vince. It's really important to note, I think, that tourism is a major economic driver for our community. So even if your business isn't, um, you know, even if you're not a, a brick and mortar store on Main Street or you're not a hotel, the success of those entities is absolutely critical um, and spreads. It's that ripple effect or the idea of, um, you know, a rising time uh, lifts all boats. Did I get that right? But you know what I mean. And as Jess is transitioning to the next slide, let me just add, we know that tourism is down uh, since the pandemic, but it is bouncing back. Uh, in 2021, we invited almost a million visitors back to the area. And again, the five colleges is a huge attraction, um, but uh, they stay an average of 1.4 room nights and all of that translates to uh, tax dollars for the state and um, local uh, economy. So uh, it is very important and uh, tourism as a division of the chamber uh, accounts for about a quarter of our budget, $250,000 of our million dollar budget. So uh, we can't and we don't nor do we desire to take it lightly. And all of our investors in the chamber uh, by virtue become our tourism partners uh, because we have a belief that everyone in some form or way is part of the tourism economy. Okay. As, I men oh, as I mentioned before, um, many, many of our members are small businesses, they're entrepreneurs, they come to their work because they love the thing um, that they do, whether it's, uh, you know, um, massage or graphic design or you name it. Um, and so we really look to providing important information. Um, as you all know, the internet is chock full of resources, right? You could spend a million years trying to find the answers and then questioning the source. So what we try to do is bring in experts and to partner with experts to provide resources to our members and to the entrepreneurial business community as a whole. Um, that might look like a workshop on health insurance for small businesses that we did last week. Um, it might look like a link and learn regarding diversity and leadership. It might be a relationship with SCORE or the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center or Valley Community Development where you can find small business resources. Um, but we're often a, a guiding point to, to getting people to the right entities to provide them with the information that they need to start and stay strong. Advocacy. We can do so much more together than we can do individually. And often the chamber is sort of the crux of those efforts whether it's advocating with local, state, regional um, officials and partnering with them on projects. For example, the free COVID tests are a result of a partnership with Representative Lindsay Sabadosa. Um, whether it is um, having a seat on the Economic Development Council or the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, Vince is typically our representative. Um, so it's important that we are at the helm of or at the table um, for conversations about how this region grows, changes, attracts new businesses, um, and supports the businesses that are here. Um, is there anything else 
Vince, that you'd like to mention about, about that topic? I uh, just want to say, too, that we have incredible access to uh, our elected officials, and we are the first to get information uh, that's hot off the press from the state house. Uh, and uh, building those relationships, you know, have just been a real win for our business community and anyone really uh, who's engaged in our community and invested in the chamber in that way. And that's it. So I'm going to read this slide out loud too, because I think it's worth saying. Um, again, these are our guiding principles. Our vision is a prosperous community distinguished by creativity, inclusion, caring, and stewardship of place for the benefit of all. Um, and now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to try to stop sharing. Here we go. Here we go. Um, and uh, turn it back over to Lindsay um, for the second portion of the conversation. And look at that, everybody. It's 1228. I didn't even bleed over. If for some of the folks here who know me, this is a major victory. <laughs> <laughs> you did so well. I just want to publicly state that. <laughs> I think maybe we're turning it over to Chris. Oh, sorry no, about that. It's fine. Yeah. I can totally I mean, step I was, in and make it up. I was, I was completely ready for Lindsay to take this that This is over. what really happens with the volunteers. We just improvise all the time and it's yeah. great. Yeah. Act like you're prepared. They won't totally. know you're not prepared. Um, no, I like to test them. Great, <laughs> great job, Jess and Vince. Thank you very much. I know it's not easy putting all these things together. Um, and going through all of them, but I think that was a really high level, wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, it was a wonderful way to start this discussion. So I'm going to apologize in advance because when you do a, a round table type forum, if people don't unmute and just answer these questions, I'm just going to start randomly calling on people and making you answer these questions. So let's get in there and let's just make this a nice open dialogue because that was the whole goal of it. So mm -hmm. We're going to kind of focus here with the message of the meeting has been, you know, what to expect when you're investing. And I think we've laid the foundation, but now we need to hear from you about the questions you have, things that are happening to you or the like minded folks in your organizations, and the ideas and items that can start the discussions that will hopefully mold and change the way that we look at and support our investors, both existing and new. So why don't we start with maybe the easiest, um, and I would love for one of our non-investors uh, to jump in and start here. So when you think about joining organizations or you become invested in a organization like a chamber, what is it that you feel you need? What would you need from an organization like the Greater Northampton Community, uh, Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce? Don't all unmute at once. Joe, you're coming. I, I saw your finger coming for the unmute button. That or you had to change the <laughs> channel on the radio. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna start with you because I thought you were gonna unmute yourself. I, my brain is uh, turning and I'm trying to think of an answer for you, Chris. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to see you again too, by the way, Joe. And these are the beauty of these type of things. You meet people in different walks of life or different spots and then you bump back into them at an event like this. And it yeah. just reinvigorates the fact that you should probably reach out and make a connection from that first time that we met. So um, I'll take you off the spot. Does anyone on the call or anyone on here have an idea of something that you feel you would need or would like to ask about or something to start the conversation around what the chamber could provide you as either a solopreneur, a new business, a startup, et cetera? Julie's got an idea. I will jump in. So, um, hi, Thanks. I'm Julie Hexer. Uh, I run Pocket Full of Joy Home Organizing, and I help people who feel like they have too much clutter at home uh, downsize their belongings and experience more relief and joy and ease in their home. Um, I I've been to. <laughs> we um, we um, or I I am I've been to a few arrive at fives uh, so far. It's been great, um, and I have met uh, very good people at the arrives at, at, at five, being a non-member. Um, it's always, I think, you know, I'm not the best net, networker. I'm very good in one-on-one -on -one situations. 
um, which is how I work with my clients. Uh, but I have a hard time sort of, you know, navigating the room, this kind of thing in a large group. Um, right. So I would hope for, um, you know, if I join the chamber, um, I would have maybe access to some more resources to kind of see like, well, who, who are the people who are members of the chamber, not just sort of the business names, but who are the people who really make up the community um, and how might I uh, get to know them in, um, you know, through the, maybe the member, member directory in some way, maybe see faces in advance so that when I come to these events, I know who they are a little bit in advance and maybe I can do a little research. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do is create a, an ecosystem, uh, a little small network of people that I can refer some of my clients to. Um, and I'd love to sort of have an idea like, oh, well, I know I need, I'm looking for these kinds of people maybe to partner with. Um, how could I uh, maybe just be a little bit more strategic about uh, try, trying to get to know people um, in this great community? So, well, that thoughts. is that is an outstanding yeah. introduction to how we onboard new me, new investors um, after joining our chamber. So you've heard enough from me today and you will continue to hear more from me. So Jennifer, can I tap you to ask you maybe to basically just jump in and do what I would have done to explain to Julie how our ambassador program helps make new investors feel more comfortable when they have those concerns around the networking and that introduction to this crazy Absolutely. Community. Yeah, I got your back, Chris. I knew you had. <laughs> we do have an ambassador committee made up of folks that are chamber members that are aware of that connection, that we're aware that folks are, are in their parking lot thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to walk in the door and see all of these strangers? And uh, we're welcoming, um, we would greet you at the door and we're happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one or we can make those introductions. Um, I'm sorry, Julie, but I'm just going to use like a, a new home buyer, right? If somebody's new to the area, they're looking to buy a house. I mean, we could introduce them to a realtor. Um, if someone's starting a business and they need a payroll and bookkeeping assistance, we could connect them with a payroll person and just make those connections. If they have children that are entering schools, we might know somebody whose spouse is a school teacher, right? It's just mm -hmm. those connections. Mm -hmm. that we have so we're able to be like the convener and and exactly. connect you with with what you need or who you're looking for or just provide you with familiarity and uh, and take that stigma or make it less overwhelming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as and a as a new person and that's a great way to put it from the from your exact point julie about coming to the event and those concerns many of our investors join and they're not people that come to arrive at fives they join for alternative reasons mm -hmm. and we still have a program that we operate through as ambassadors where every new investor is assigned an ambassador who reaches out welcomes them ask them what they need next do you want to go have a cup of coffee so you can share that experience that networking isn't my forte you know and that way too you have that one warm name that face Maybe it's even, hey, Chris, are you going to Forbes Library tonight? Because if you are, maybe you could meet me in the parking lot five minutes before and we can walk in together. Or I'd love to pick your brain because I really have some questions for Lindsay Labonte and I'm not a fan of just walking up cold to someone new and then starting a business conversation where, you know, once you know me for a minute, you know, I have no problem interrupting anyone um, and, and, and diverting their conversation. But if, if there's an option, I mean, it's what happened to Priscilla and I at one of the Arrive at Fives. She's standing on the stage looking like she could use someone to talk to. And I said, you know what, I'm going to sit here and have a conversation. And we got into it. And I was able to make a connection for her and introduce her to some folks that were directly in her sphere by just making it easy and then taking two steps back and allowing two people to just have a natural conversation. So uh, great questions. And it's what I feel a lot of our investors are concerned about is mm -hmm. what's it like when I'm new? And I think that's something we do a really, really great job and we have to continue to get better at. So hopefully if some of you decide to join as investors, um, we can go through that program. Myself, Mark, Amanda, Lindsay, 
Jennifer, we're all ambassadors, so there's a good chance, Elena, sorry, oh. there's a good chance you'll get stuck with one of us. Um, unfortunately, hopefully it's not this guy, because you won't ever get a word in. Um, but we, we would love to show you what that experience is like and help you um, learn it. But thank you so much for that question. So let's- Can I, can I add one other little yeah. thing, Chris? Um, yeah. So uh, last night at the Arrive of Five, one of our uh, members came up and said, so Jess, who should I meet? And this morning I sent out and it, you know we talked a little bit about who they wanted to meet. And this morning I sent out an email introducing them and another one of our prospects. They have a similar, um, they work in a similar industry, but not doing the same thing. And they both target small businesses, largely focused on artists, local artists. So those, uh, those kinds of introductions happen through me all the time where I'm making a cold call warm by doing an introduction. So were you to join, you, we would sit down, we'd have a conversation and work out a game plan. And you'd say, I wanna meet these people. And I would say, okay, I can introduce you. If, if I know them, it doesn't work as well when I don't, but I'll try. <laughs> um, so there are multiple layers of ways that we do that, that are, um, that, you know, that's just what we do. It happens all the time. I'm gonna interrupt you too, Chris, cause I wanna offer one other, well, two things. The um, Chambers membership directory on the website too mm -hmm. is really expansive and you can create your own profile there, including as much detail as you want. So it's like a little dating profile, right? So you mentioned kind of being able to go and see who's who. So you could certainly search on that and have an idea beforehand. And then like Jess said, she's a wealth of connection knowledge. So you could say, you know, look, I've searched for these types of folks. I want to meet them. Can you introduce me? Um, mm -hmm. So there's that side of it. Also, what I found that's been super helpful for me is uh, leveraging the the uh, the network of the chamber through all of the digital media work that the chamber does. Mm -hmm. So this was mentioned in the slideshow, but just to kind of give a real real life example of that. I mean, I'm my own marketing sales bookkeeping, right? Like all of us, I think yeah. many, if not everybody on this call is a solopreneur. So um, it's hard to as one person, meet as many people as you need to actually create the connections in your business that make it thrive. Um, so you could even put that ask out there on a newsletter, or if you volunteer on a committee and you happen to volunteer to do a video for the chamber or something, you know, that gives you the ability to kind of put your own ask and say, I'm looking to meet these people. You don't have to just run ads that are like, here's my business name and contact information, you know, it's, it's much more personalized. And I think that the Northampton chamber specifically does a really great job of offering that leverage to its, its uh, members or investors as well. Thank you, Lindsay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was a great, it was a great point, Lindsay, around the, the uh, profiles. It, it takes a little time. You can tweak it. You can get back in there and edit it can add new information. I know that I've had people reach out to me and say, I was on a Zoom call and, you know, you were on there from the chamber. I didn't know who you were. I didn't have your contact info, but I got your information from the chamber's website. Or I saw you on the annual meeting and they put your name of your business in one of the posts where it tagged me on it and it's led to business. But more importantly, it's led to relationships. And those relationships down the road have led the opportunities to do business, which I think is really what I try, try to drill down to. So I would like to know from those solo entrepreneurs and some of our current investors as well, you know, what is, what is most challenging right now for you? And I know that's a loaded question. And, but is it, is it the challenge of getting your product or service in front of new people? Is it a challenge of meeting the people to get it? So just to give you an idea of where I'm asking, I'm not asking for, you know, I'd really love my rent on Main Street to come down. We all would, no questions. And we're working as hard as we can on it. We got some really cool stuff coming too um, that we'll be able to share with the community as time goes on. But I, I just use that as an example because I think that is a great way for us to start a conversation, to open eyes and minds into how 
the chamber might be able to help with that, even if it's a topic you don't think falls under what that investor would be. So what are some of those challenges right now for anyone on this call that would like to share? Sure. I'll bite. <laughs> I love it. Hi. Hey, Chris. Hi, nice to see you again. <laughs> Wonderful. And yes, to see thank you, you very much for for being aware and on it and uh, <laughs> jumping in in my time of need there, looking around. You're, you're great. You pointed me in a direction to your point you've been talking about, introducing me to you know another professional kind of helping build that circle. And that was that was really helpful and you know was a great taste of the kinds of things that you're talking about offering. So thank, thank you, you for thank that. You. Um, one of the things I'm a new, I'm a you know, health and well-being coach. And so one of my big challenges, you know, less than a year old here as a business is the getting the word out. Here I am, I exist, I have, you know, some what I hope are you know valuable services to offer. And so that business development side and just a, just general awareness, I mean, yep. um, and and that kind of a thing is sort of the, I guess the key things at this point. Yeah. And, and I think that speaks to a lot of what Jess was talking to through her presentation about the social media reach, the connectors, the announcements, you know, whether it's your, you know, doing a ribbon cutting or you're actually doing some form of a, you know, maybe it's not even a ribbon cutting. It's like a virtual launch and it's a website or a, you know, a e-boutique. Like there are opportunities for us at the chamber and, you know, I, I, the legions of people that are all out helping. I hate the army mm -hmm. reference, but it is, you know, there is a group that is bigger and bigger than you know, right? When you're part of something and it is growing constantly, there is just that opportunity for us to share, to like, to comment, and to connect. And I think those connections, you know, there's so many people on this call that do some similar things, right? Yeah. I can see some great synergy yeah. about a workshop or kind of like something to bring people into some form of a wellness program that we could bring in to say, we have all of these new investors that we want you to get introduced because I can see a lot of synergy of opportunities for you all to share business, but how do we make that happen? We know when you come to us with your ideas. So thank you for sharing that. Um, anyone else have a similar or another item they're struggling with or a challenge that they would like to um, talk with the group about or see how we might be able to look at how uh, investing as a member of this organization might benefit that? Jim had his hand up. Sure. Hey, hi. Hey, Chris. Um, and hi, Lindsay. Good to see you again. Um, and Priscilla, we should, we should uh, get together uh, at some point because my, what we're doing is very similar. Um, so I, I've been a trainer, a uh, personal trainer for the last four or five years, and now I'm I'm um, kind of transitioning. Uh, I've gotten more interested as I'm getting older uh, in longevity uh, and in sort of extending my health span um, and figuring out what to do with my knees. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so, uh, and I am giving a, a lecture series at Forbes over the winter and spring, a monthly free lecture spirit, series on longevity, and it's. So from physical to cognitive health, to nutrition, to biometric tracking, like all these different things that people can do uh, to help um, extend their, their health span, um, balance training, uh, various things like that. So, um, so sort of my pr product and my service in a way has shifted. And now I'm thinking like, oh, actually, sorry, I'm like this longevity coach. And, you know, like, I don't really know how that fits into you know, it's like sort of not on the drop down menus of like, what do you do? You know, it's like, oh, it's not there. So, uh, so I'm sort of trying to figure out like, you know, how does, um, you know, how, how do I plug, who can use the knowledge that I have? How do I plug my knowledge into the community um, uh, in a meaningful way? Um, you know, what can I do with this, with this lecture series, you know, these eight, oh. eight lectures, um, you know, who, who would be interested in having me come in and talk about that, you know, sort of, so I'm shifting from just doing the, the sort of physical training, which I still do a fair amount of, um, to um, sort of trying to establish myself more as sort of like this go-to guy about like, oh yeah, he's like the longevity guy, I think you should talk to him about that, um, and uh and and then and really just you know I've I've, I've uh, lived in Northampton for four years but I don't feel like I um, know the community terribly well and uh, 
you know, I, um, I worked at the Y for a while. I know a lot of people who went, <laughs> people are always saying, do I know you from the Y? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just to, just to get to know people more uh, here. Uh, let, so. let, let me take a stab at that, yeah. if I may. Uh, one of the things that you get as an investor in the chamber is you get access to a Jess Thompson, who is brilliant when it comes to brainstorming ideas. Our, our sons went to preschool together. We already <laughs> Oh, you already that. know then. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes I have to reel her in. <laughs> um, but uh, we put our heads together uh, and we figure out ways to help you penetrate the different segments that you want to. And I had unmuted myself before because one of the things that we will do is look at sort of shared challenges, shared experiences and bring those uh, sectors together for a round table discussion, which has worked well. But as I hear you talk about your business, Jim, I'm thinking we've got to connect you if you're not already connected to Northampton neighbors. We've mm -hmm. got to connect you yeah, to Justin. the, are you, are you connected to them? We oh, talked just, about it the yeah, first time yeah. we met. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And we've got to make sure that you're connected to the city's council on aging. And mm -hmm. also we've got to connect you to the uh, uh, personal financial planning advisors in the community. And there are many. Yeah. And that's the segment of a population who's always looking forward, planning and thinking about mm -hmm. things that maybe you can introduce them to this concept of aging uh, as they're planning for their financial long being. Uh, mm -hmm. so I see those as natural adjacencies that would benefit the direction that you're trying to take your organization. And at least there's an awareness that will build from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and we know, we know the people, we know um, to Priscilla's case, we know who the, uh, you know, folks are who are concerned about, you know, health and wellness. And for Julie's case, we know who the empty nesters are who may be looking to downsize. We can help you navigate through to reach the right psychographic of your potential client base. Mm -hmm. uh, not saying all of them may be interested in your services, but at least we can make the connection for you. Thank that's you. great, Vince. And that that's the power. I mean, honestly, Jim, that's the power of the chamber on top of one of the last things you mentioned, which is you've lived here for four years, you know some people, but you don't, you know, do I know you from the Y? Do I know you from here? I'll be honest, when I started in this business, I grew up in East Hampton. Um, I have a lot of connections, but I didn't know a ton of people. And, you know, I'd say 70% of the people I meet in the business community or at a business event they've met me at one of the local area chambers and some of them are like, well, I think I met you at all of them. You uh, <laughs> at all of them. But the, the point is that there's a value at each and everything offers something different. But one thing about the, this, about the greater Northampton chamber is, is that because the community is larger and we have so many great investors that it truly becomes a, I know Lindsay because of the chamber. I know if I need business or I have friends that need things that Lindsay can handle, I know I have Lindsay and her entire team of people that I've also met, which is very similar to how, I mean, I met Amanda standing outside of the chamber and invited her to join my personal networking group. To Julie's point, we have a small little ecosystem of 15 or 20 like-minded professionals that send a lot of business. We've since become close friends, we go to, we're, we're going to a charity fundraiser on Friday night together, and we're going to support and help each other grow our businesses, and we do business together, and all of that happened out of showing up to an event at the chamber, and I got a client, I got a referral partner, and more importantly than anything, I got a really good friend, and I think that that speaks to the community that is, is, is fostered and really garnished here, and you know, to that point, it's not always a business connection. I, you know, I have a friend who owns a yoga studio in South Hadley. She, is she has been extremely uh, successful and done great there. Well, COVID has made that industry much different and it's changed the landscape. 
And she was struggling at times with filling people and getting the classes and getting people inside. And I threw out to her one day, like, have you ever thought about like renting out this beautiful empty studio to like photographers who don't have things, to personal trainers who need a place to train, to CPR classes? And she was like, I love and hate you all at once. <laughs> no, I've been banging my head about making money. And like now she's like, it's changed things for her. Cause, and it was just an idea. So sometimes it's just a friend you don't even realize that it's a uh, catching up with Lindsay um, over coffee. And, you know, you, you end up with this great idea and some, you might find a new hustle or a side job or a new opportunity for a personal or a professional advancement. And I feel like that to me is been worth my time and my financial investment in this community, the relationships I, that I've made. But we have a few minutes left here. I would love to hear any suggestions you have for us. So for uh, the members, for the board members on the call, any suggestions maybe around your experiences at the Arrive at Fives, your experience on this call today, things we could be doing to help make potential investors or our current investors get even more out of their association to the chamber? I'd love to get an idea or two from the folks uh, on the call. I don't want to call anyone out, but come on. Somebody's got to have an idea for them. We're perfect. I love it. Julie, what do you got? All right. Well, <laughs> I'm looking at the website and I'm thinking like, oh, I'd like to find, I know in the um, uh, presentation when Jess was speaking, um, there's talk about personalized landing pages. And I thought, oh, well, let me just type in some names and see if I can find a person's personalized landing page. And maybe it's really a business has a personalized landing page and not a person, but it would be nice to be able to find someone's business after I just met them at the chamber by actually searching on their name and not remembering like, does it, is it the, you know, the wellness cafe or is it wellness cafe and trying to really get the search terms to match. Um, it'd be really great to have that be searchable by name. Um, I think it would also um, just help, help, um, you know, yeah, help in other ways too. Uh, let yeah, us you could have a short, short link where it's like, I don't know, chambermaster.com uh, forward slash, and then you could have a short link and just make it like your business name or your personal name or whatever. Um, so you could often, you know, give people that link and say, yeah, I really am a member of the chamber. I'm not just, you know, checking it out. Like here I am. Great feedback. So. Yeah, that is, that is great feedback. Maybe we can uh, find a way to do that. I just wanted to mention two things. One is because we are now an open organization for, and, and, and have a, a way for everyone to have access to the chamber, you don't have to be a business owner. Um, we've opened things up and as just mentioned in the presentation, all of our programs are absolutely free. The only two that we have uh, reserved for investors only is that you have to be an investor to participate in the Northampton gift card program and to advertise in the visitor guide for a tourism program, you have to be an investor. So everything else is absolutely free. So that's a great idea to maybe say, here are some a sneak peek at some of the companies, but uh, preserving that portal for investors only to network uh, to other investors is important because there are a thousand businesses in Northampton, Northampton alone, a thousand businesses and only, I shouldn't say only 500, 500 are investors in the chamber. So we want to protect that uh, precious uh, asset for you the best way we can and have people who are considering uh, our investors' businesses consider them first uh, before going to the other 500 because that's what we do. We support those who support us and our community. When you invest in the chamber, you really are investing in the community. And to Julie's point, I think there's, there's you know, one we should look into to see if we can do things. Obviously, we Chamber Master is a product, so there are limitations to what they, how it works. Um, but maybe Jess, Vince, you know, ambassador team, we should think here, maybe we should come up with a short program or record a 10 minute video or something of going through and updating your profile, showing people what it looks like and sending that out to our members or to our investor group, 
so that they know there's this resource to them. And to Julie's point, maybe we can get a hundred of those 500 to actually beef it up to the point where there's enough content in there that makes it better and easier to search. Because I'll admit, mine is probably lazy done with a logo that is three years old and a picture that isn't even mine. Um, so we are coming up on time and I want to be respectful because of everyone's time here. And this has been a great, I, I'll speak for all of you. It's been a wonderful hour spent. Um, any other feedback or ideas, anyone that hasn't been able to share something today that would like to share something or um, has a question that they would like us to parking lot and get back to them on. This is a this is your last moment for this day to kind of speak to or get an answer. So is there anything out there that anyone has or would like to review before we close out? Um, hi. I'm sorry. Hi, no, I'm so happy that you chimed in. Hold on. Uh, this is actually Lauren. Oh, we'll get to you one section. Hi, Lauren. Um, so I actually attended the Alive at Five, and sorry, we're masked inside, and I share an office. But okay. Um, I actually would like to more easily find information about the gift card because when you click on it, it tells you kind of roughly what it is and that it's accepted, but it doesn't really give you a lot of information. I mean, it tells you like restaurants and where it's accepted, but it doesn't give a lot of information. And I'm sure if I search the site with like how it works, is it dollar for dollar value, that type of thing. Um, just because I'd like to more, know more about it because that might be something if we join the chamber that we'd be interested in. Yeah, there there is some information. I will get you the link. Um, and uh, if anybody else has any questions, um, the gift card programs is not a fundraiser for the chamber. It's something that we do to support our local business community. Uh, so essentially there is a, um, what's the right word? There's a, a roughly 4% fee that is taken, but at, um, besides that, the dollars come right back to you. And that basically covers the operations credit card fees it basically covers credit card fees but also creating and uh staffing and uh marketing the program we can definitely... jeanette did you have did you want to share well, your question or um idea yeah i just well i first off wanted to thank elena for her uh warm welcome yesterday and jess has been really helpful i've been attended a few arrive at fives and um yesterday i felt like i was even more comfortable one of those people who's a little more introverted does better one-on-one -on -one. and i just um what priscilla and jim i'm also uh, you know kind of feeling similar to them in terms of having like a healthcare business um you know, treating people with chronic illness through a functional medicine um, approach, uh, which is, you know, just kind of getting out there. But I just wanted to thank you all, you know, for this presentation too, and all the value that the chamber offers. I just wanted to highlight that there are incentives right now for those who join before December 1st. I just put a link in the chat. Um, uh, for a solopreneur, membership is $415 annually. It can be billed quarterly, monthly, et cetera. But many of the in incentives are around $100 or $200 value. So if it's something you're thinking about, um, there's, and uh, many of the incentives are really focused on visibility, it can be a good tool. Um, and I'd be happy, y'all know where to find me. You probably have received like 5,000 emails from me. Um, there's a link in my email where you can just schedule a meeting with me. And if you wanted to chart what membership might look like for you, how we could create a program that would help you to meet your goals, um, I would be absolutely delighted to sit down and chat with you. Uh, it's totally my jam, as Vince mentioned, um, to brainstorm and think about the ways that we can support your success. So um, reach out to me. I'd be absolutely delighted to meet with you. All right. I think um, uh, co-hosts, is there anything else you'd like to say? It's 101. So I just wanted to wrap 
head on our way to wrapping it up. I just wanted to say for those people, you can save your chat and save all of the all of the people who are in your chat. There's like a three dots at the bottom of the chat and you can save your chat that way. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you for being here, everyone. Reach out to me with questions. I'm here to be a resource um, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you at, at upcoming meetings, events, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.